How you doing everybody? Welcome back. It's been a while since I've been able to record anything. Been busy with this place. I finally have a couple cars in my garage, which is not finished. Not by a long shot, but at least I got something to toy around with. And fix up a little bit. I got a table full of parts. When I moved, a lot of stuff got jumbled and I forgot which one worked and which one didn't. Here's my table of good stuff. Everything here works. Three cone boxes and an orange box. Surprising for the orange box. You Mopar guys know what I'm talking about. Box of wires. And my table is still what has to be tested. I found this nice Mallory High Fire number seven. It's an interesting uh, setup. It's pretty old. That's why I got it, just for nostalgia purposes. A little staging controller. Low and high. Just set this up numerically by pressing the buttons higher and lower. It's pretty simple. Finding the instructions was a little difficult. Five minutes. And this is a high-end retard. You really can't see on there anymore, but there are numbers on there. You can see the number 11 right here, kind of, sort of. I don't know, can you even see that? I don't know if you guys can, this camera's not picking it up. I figured I'd give it a shot, see what it's all about. And here's my failure boxes. This is brand new. This one really ticks me off because it's a brand new piece. You know, if it was an older Mopar one, they, they, they had a sketchy reputation. And these things, these, these things have always sucked for me. These things are the worst in my book. This started the vehicle up six times and failed. Six times. Six starts, can you believe it? Unfreaking believable. I gotta try out these distributors. This one I'm really interested in. This is the MSD programmable one. Vacuum advance hooks up here. There's no real canister and there's no real vacuum advance. It's all done by a computer board on the inside. So that might be interesting. I don't know, we'll see how that one floats. My door jam from AMD. My aluminum bumper brackets. So for all this spare parts that I have around here, I've been testing on my Magnum. This thing runs pretty good. Everything works. It's a 2000 uh, 5.9 that I just put the Hooker Super Competition headers on. These are one and three quarters. Some Anson valve covers. 750 Carter, old stuff. I've had that for ever. An RPM intake. Another look at the headers, you really can't see. Should have got this video out earlier before it got dark. And my other Mopar Performance Chrome box. Nice, nice ignition module. 7,000 RPM, can't complain. Guess a few, got, a few of you guys might be a little interested in this Magnum. Well, for 500 bucks, don't ridicule it so much. I've also owned it and drove it daily for about 10 years until I got uh, my uh, 2003 Dakota. And then I just used it all, this, you know, sparingly all over the place. A lot of this rust wasn't even there when I first got the car. I picked it up off the original owner. He documented 324,000 miles on the 318 that was in here in 10 years. I said, how the heck did you do that? He goes, oh, simple. Every year, load the family up, pick a vacation spot, and drive there. I hate flying. I just let my ass off. This is a duster, it's a 71. It's a bit beat up, rusty and crusty as well. However, for the price, I'm not complaining. I think I paid Bubba 700 bucks for this as a roller. And this accumulated a little bit more rust while it sat outside. It's a darn shame, but it's actually not too bad. It's not too good, but it's not too bad. For something I just want to have a whole lot of fun in, yeah, I won't, 
really mind replacing some of the rusty parts. I have to do floors, both sides and the trunks. Pretty much came as you see it, minus the back seats I popped in. It's pretty well beat up. I know it's hard to see. But inside I got a 10 and a half to one 340 standard summit headers, which have, this is a 3 8 thick flange, really, really makes a difference. RPM, another Carter 750. Uh, like I said, 10 and a half to one has um, modified comp cam in there, 241, 247 hydraulic. These are the speed, uh, sorry, I was about to say Speedmaster. Uh, well, that's semi-right. <clears throat> the guys from Promax grabbed these ch these Chinese heads. You can see there's nothing on the side, but they run them through their CNC program and they flow 280 CFM. I picked these up before the trick flows were out and available. So, you know, 280, 285 CFM at the big end of the lift, not bad, not bad at all. Paid a whopping two grand for them. Can't complain at all. 208, 16 stainless steel valves. This should hustle pretty good. It's a nice pump gas driver. Drum brakes, everything stock. Should be a hoot. That orange box over there, way in the back. Hold on, let me bring her up. She works fine. But if I put the chrome box on, I have a gold box laying around someplace. I wanna try the gold box out, see how that works. And over there, you can kind of see it sitting on the side. It's uh, the Jacobs module. This thing, I had picked up actually for my uh, a car when my daughter was born. It was a Hyundai Excel. And it uses this trigger wire. kind of annoying because it doesn't readily adapt to a magnetic pickup distributor or anything else. So you got to use the coil wire from your coil to this. It triggers this coil and then this coil wire goes to your distributor. So it's kind of like a peripheral add-on, not so much a standalone. It works really well. This delivers a hell of a spark for the Hyundai cap and rotor it would burn it up in about a year it would literally turn that cap into a big piece of like carbon charcoal it was ridiculously strong it had me some very good mileage whoops wrong way there we go oh, i'm so sorry about that fellas so here it is still waiting for the town to come in and tell me that i screwed something up go for my variants and then I'll run some electrical wire and plumbing back in this corner here. And I'm gonna put a staircase up and build a loft up top, build a nice little office over there and a work area room over here. I'm gonna put in a, a, a lift over here that I can drive on and lift the entire car up by all four wheels so I can double my storage space. That should work out real nice. And until then, I just have the floor to work on. So I'm not really exactly busting my ass over this. And I still have a whole lot of mess to clean up, a fence to fix, and a whole lot of shrubbery to put in. I don't like working in public all the time. Although it's really, really quiet around here, I can't complain. Get to see everybody playing in the pool when it gets nice and hot out. Take a break and see my horsies. I don't know where they are today. But with this garage back here, I'll put in a little uh, office in this corner as I'm approaching. I like to get a couch, a TV, a refrigerator, and a small hot plate, and uh, not a hot plate, a uh, microwave oven so I can sit down and relax. You know, you need them breaks from this crap. Get the loft going up here. These walls are 14 feet. When they first put these walls up, I was like, dude, I didn't know what a 20 foot walls. They're like, it's not 20 foot, they're 14. 
I would have known it was going to be this big, I probably wouldn't have ordered it, but I think it's better off that it's this high. I have a lot of space. I'm going to have to get that electrical box in here somewhere, the water running in somewhere. Got to have some fresh water. Build a loft for some storage parts, maybe even a bed when the wife gets mad at me. That doesn't really happen, though. And that's where I'm at. So right now I'm just testing parts. Next are gonna be distributors. Actually, this one's next. I wanna make sure this is up and running. Worst case scenario, turns into something I put in a showcase you look at and go, oh, hey, that's neat. I remember those. We'll get those going. All right, so. There we are. That's where I stand. And uh, sorry, I haven't been around. I had uh, twisted up my back really bad. And I was just not mobile for about almost a month. It was, it was, it was horrible the first couple of weeks. It, you know, it was almost to the point where I was ready to call my wife just to help me to get up to go to the bathroom. That's how bad it was. It was completely ridiculous. A few of you guys that also watch Charlie Savito in uh, his channel probably noticed me a couple days ago. I was actually feeling pretty good. He says, hey, you wanna come on down and sit in with me for a live? It was his first live. He was afraid he wasn't gonna have enough to talk about. And I'm like, you have plenty to talk about. And uh, it was nice to sit in on the live. So you guys probably saw me and I said, yeah, maybe I should just get off my ass and get motivated. You know how it is, once you sit in that big easy chair, you don't feel like moving. Yeah, I got there a little bit. I admit it. I got a little lazy and tired and uh, really frustrated because in order for me to get in this garage, I had to use this plywood and some rocks <laughs> just so I can drive in. Man, that sucked. But you know what? At least I know I can back the trailer in here. I can drive in and out. I just throw my plywood down. I use a couple half inch boards just to make my little table. I really like to get this floor polished before I start going crazy, but um, no rest for the wicked. I'm getting very, very bored. I gotta get this thing up and running. Something wrong with the start circuit. I can jump it out the screwdriver on the uh, starter relay. I know you Chrysler guys know that trick. You've seen this before. You just take your handy dandy screwdriver and just, let me see if I get all this here. Just, just run it right, oops, sorry, right in here and boom, boom. She starts turning over. As long as you got that key on the on run position, she'll light up. So I look forward to getting this thing together and getting this down the track. I built that as a street motor to have a lot of fun. While it's not overly potent, should be okay. Should run fine. Work on something else later. And on this one, I just want to do a small cam swap, just up the ante a little bit. This car has a 727 and a 2500 stall converter and 355 gears, and the tires are 245, 60, 15s. It's just made to drive. That's all I like doing in this. A little power never hurt no one. After a while, I'll get an overdrive transmission in there, really enjoy it for long hauls. And this one has a 904, with a uh, 3,000, I, I, I think it's a 3,000 converter. The rear end's an eight and a quarter, uh, eight and three quarter, so sorry. And even though I got rollers on this now, these tires will just absolutely melt under anything. So they, they, they're just there to roll the car around on. Uh, currently in the back, it has 488 gears. And yeah, that's, that's, that's steep. I don't think you can see it. No, way too dark now. But uh, it's just a basic cheap package. Competition drag shocks, Summit two and a half inch exhaust, some Dynamax mufflers on there. It'll be fun. Beat the crap out of it whenever you feel the need for speed. I don't know. All right. Well, that's all I got for you guys now. No major forward motion on anything. I'm waiting on parts for my 352 motor. I went to uh, Mike at B3 Racing. Oh, sorry, fellas. Hope that didn't hurt your eyes. Went to uh, Mike. Uh, 
for a geometry correction kit. And I'm just waiting for him to make it up. Um, I'm running the 590 cab in the 352 uh, cubic inch motor. So that 590 lift with the 1.6 rocker is really picking it up. And on the Edelbrock heads, it's just not quite, you know, it's not really jiving that. That push rod is making contact at the bottom of the adjuster at a really, you know, I, I feel the angle is pretty severe. I know guys run it like that before, but you, you know, you're losing them, you know, a bit and it's putting a lot of stress. I don't want to break an adjuster. That's just an annoyance I really don't want to contend with because, you know, <laughs> little adjusters floating around your oil pan. Yeah, no, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't care what kind of screen you have. It's so it's, it's, it's bullshit to break it. And you know, you know you break stuff when stuff's not right. So I'm trying to avoid that now. Um, what else am I waiting on? I think that's about it. I think that's it. And then I should be ready to start. Oh, and back there, lying on the floor, you could probably just about make out a long time ago. If you look at one of my earliest videos, there it is in pieces. It's an engine test run stand. It just made the slide together. It's not very good. It's not very sturdy. It just, it's just something that I um, actually used to break in that motor. So if you look at an earlier video, you can see me at my house in New York in my backyard where I start up this 340, you know, just to run it, break in the motor. And uh, you can see what the engine stand looked like. All right, wow. I'm so sorry, I just rambled on for almost 17 minutes. So I think it's time. If any of you guys lasted this long, thank you very much. Again, my apologies for not being able to post anything, but I was injured and that sucked. So till next time, see you later.